What's going on, everybody? It's your Supreme Leader Aaron here, and today for Outside the Box, I've got something that's really awesome that I've been wanting to show, that I've been wanting to get a hold of, and finally got a hold of this year. And that was a wave that I've been looking to complete. Completed it, and now I got to show it off. It's the NECA Cinema Machines Aliens and Predator Collection. Now, this was something I was dying to get a hold of. I haven't been able to get like all of them in one go for a fair price. Usually these things go for like 50 or 60 bucks a piece. And I managed to snag these from someone who was just probably trying to clear out some junk that they had. They probably got them, didn't like them, and were trying to sell them off. And sold them pretty much close to base price at $20 a piece. So I ended up paying like 150 160 I think. Maybe close to, I think it was close to about like 200 for the lot. Um, but still not a bad price not for not for seven pieces it's seven pieces guys and like I said these go for a fairly high price so I'm gonna unbox these in the order they come and the first one is of course the space jockey oh and I remember this scene in aliens so well it was one of my favorite moments when they actually you know get into the ship and I'm gonna try to keep the boxes but take the pieces out because the boxes you can't really see it probably for the glare a little bit but there is that scene from alien where they're walking in the ship that looks really cool so I'm gonna go ahead and take this bad boy out and I'm gonna bring him up a little bit so y'all can see the detail on him look at that guys that is just a well detailed piece they even have like the hole in the chest and I'll try to bring that a little closer my camera is not it's a new camera and it doesn't focus it doesn't autofocus but detail wise I love the design of this I've always wanted something like this because I love that scene in Alien like I said where they they find the uh, derelict and they find the jockey kind of mummified into place now I don't think this moves yeah, it's pretty it's pretty much a solid piece but still I, how cool would that be to see that move but I love this scene. I just it, it I love this piece. This piece is it's real heavy too. Um next up we have part number two here, which is the derelict spaceship itself. So that scene where you that that ship has always been one of my favorite designs from a sci-fi standpoint, because it, it's unconventional. It doesn't look like you would anything you would see from typical sci-fi usually typical sci-fi back in the day you had flying saucers or you had ships that look like something that would possibly be something a human would pilot anyway like I mean if you look at Star Trek for instance it was very much that same kind of design ooh this is cool I think this comes with a stand it comes with a stand a lot of devil come with a stand I need to look at that no it shouldn't but this actually has a stand that comes with it. And this is the derelict itself. I'm going to get it out of the plastic. It's a, got twist ties, and I, you know my feeling on twist ties. It's kind of an overkill, but I mean, it's a, it's a security issue, and I get that. And you got like twist five different ways to get a twist tie off. What am I doing this for? I've got nippers. I can just cut the twist ties. I should free it now. <clears throat> there. We can pull that off. Pull that off. I want to save that cardboard because that's going back in the box. There's the artwork for the inside of that. That looks really good. I, I'm just blown away by how beautiful some of this stuff is. Right off the rip, we get the derelict out of the box. And I'm going to try to toss the plastic in my little trash box I've got here beside me. That I'm gonna be using for all my excess here but look at that now that is just really well detailed really well sculpted NECA went all out with these cinema machines and it's hefty okay it's a plastic that's okay now this one feels more like a resin it's kind of a hollow resin probably maybe a plastic I don't know 
Huh, there was a little bit of cardboard in this. But that stand it comes with is, is impressive as well. I, I like a good stand. And these are like some of the stands I had with my actual like... I actually bought a few stands like this a while back for like models and stuff like that and they really didn't work out too well. This is kind of this is the same kind of stand like a Gundam would use. It's got that same little like peg there. So you can kind of plug it in place and have it like floating above in a way or flying off. And I'll kind of pose that there in a second. Let me turn it this way so it's not like weight bearing. It doesn't really so the the stand itself doesn't really sit too well. It's very loose, so posing this is kind of hard. I guess you got to kind of gimbal it a little. I mean, it doesn't really. So it kind of poses like that. Because if you try to pose it like this, it's just so heavy that that stand isn't really going to hold it. And I guess posing it, because I'd like to, I would like to pose it kind of straightforward. And again, that stand you got to kind of force it in place, and I don't. That's a little. It's hollow. Oh, okay. Well, that's not that's not terrible. But again, there's the derelict. That is guys, that is by far one of the best sculpts I've ever seen on a vehicle from any company. And this is the stand by itself. Like I said, it's got that little like point right there that you can plug the ship in. It, it doesn't to me that stand really doesn't do a lot. It kind of gives that it lets you tilt the ship. But other than that, that's not much, there's not much else you can do with it. Next up is is vehicle number three, and this one's from Aliens itself. The first one, the first two, I think, were from Alien. Yep, the first two were from Alien itself. You know the, the original movie. And I'm gonna set all the boxes over here for right now because I want to put everything back in the box. You get two from. You get two from a uh, Alien, two from Aliens, and then whenever you get to the uh, Narcissus, it goes back to Alien one more time. Like that was I. I don't think Cinema Machine ever did anything else. They tell you, uh, it tells you, like, all the details on the back. For instance, the derelict says, uh, specifications derelict ship was discovered on 6 3 2122 on LV 426. It's asymmetrical. Unknown, a single fossilized body, presumably the pilot, was discovered on board with a chest damage indicative, in, indicative of xenomorph XX121 incubation. Size largely unknown, limited portions explored before emergency evacuation, notably a large cargo area containing thousands of eggs. Discovered by crew members of the commercial hauler US, US CSS Nostromo, who were awakened from hypersleep when their ship computer detected a 12 second beacon originating from LV 426. Kind of was hoping we would get the story behind that. Uh, the space jockey itself. It was discovered in 2122 in the wreckage of an unidentified alien spacecraft. Impossible to measure due to advanced fossilization. Is That's the age for it. Species and un unknown food fused to a podium-like chair. Massive damage to thorax. Presence of viable eggs suggests end stage of xenomorph XX121 incubation. So, that gives you kind of a brief description of the vehicles here and, their, and the items they have. So the APC gives you kind of a description, and I'll show the box here. Good luck reading it, because again, like I said, my camera doesn't focus well. And the lighting it has is... It's okay, but like I said, it's not really focusing well. I feel like this was a terrible purchase. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I definitely can use it for long range, but short range is not great. Ooh, almost dropped it. So next up we have the M57 M5 APC vehicle. Now I love the APC. And this has got a lot of movable parts. There's, it feels... It's actual metal. Like that's actually metal. I love it. I love it when you get a die cast. It has movable parts which is really cool. Like the turrets on the front here move. The turrets on the top move. Now these and... Oh does it slide? It slides back. Nice. Nice. I love it when parts move. I'm looking to see if there's any more movable parts here, like the doors. But they're not. Um, the wheels are pretty sturdy. I love it when that turret... I love it that the turret kind of tilts forward and backward there. But detail-wise, I mean, they put they put some decals on the front there. 
and they look really cool. I would love to get a model kit of this and the Chey EDL Cheyenne. Those are like two of my favorite vehicles of all time from any series because I love the way they dropship works. Which, funny enough, is the next vehicle we will be looking at. So there's the, here's the uh, APC one more time. Funny story, they actually designed this off of a, like a cargo hauler, like a like not like a plane like a plane luggage hauler. So that was a really that was a really cool like fun fact about that. Set that over there because I need that. So next up we have the UDL 4L or the UD4L Cheyenne. I always get it backwards. I always say UDL4 and it's UD4L. It's a utility dropship. <clears throat> And it's it's re I mean it gives you they give you the kind of in the description on the back here some uh, details about it. I really like the way this I really like the way this looks, and I'm gonna go ahead and break it out here. The artwork in the back is it flying, and here I'll back it up so you can kind of see that a little bit better. That's it's really cool. I like that. So let's pop that out. We got three more to go, guys, and then after that, that should be all of them. So it comes pre-folded. And the legs are down. They're permanently down. Can you pop those off? No, you can't. Oh my God! No way. That is super cool. I got. I'll, I'll show that in a minute. I'll show that in a minute because that's that just made my day there. Oh no! I heard something snap, and I hope that wasn't. Oh, it didn't go in right. There we go. So here we have the UDL4 Cheyenne in its uh, drop form. And then once it's ready to deploy, this is what makes it really cool. I'm trying to see if I can get it to open up. I don't want to break it because there we go. I was doing it wrong. There it is in... Is that right? Oh yeah, these kind of unfold too. That's why it didn't look right. Here it is in its fully deployed state, ready to fire. And I love that. I, I love that these unfold. I mean, literally the arms just kind of fold like that. And then I was like looking here and I saw this little hatch here. And you can open that up and out pops that APC with... Okay, that's permanently folded in place so that's okay but it comes with a little tiny uh, uh, APC I, I love that that is that makes my day that really makes my day that's that's so cool I love the way that it, I love the way that's designed this was really what I was looking for too I wanted the UDL4 or UD, the UD4L Cheyenne but just the sheer amount of detail they did to get this looking good. And I mean, paint scheme, it could have probably had a little more love to it because you can tell it's kind of like mass produced painted. And some of the pieces don't look like they're on there properly. That's a little bummer. Like one of the lights on here isn't really looking. You can kind of see there's a, here I'll bring it slightly closer. My camera's not gonna like it too much. Yeah, but you, yeah, I can, I can kind of see there's a little bit of, and you got to fold this just right, or it won't fold at all. But other than that, I mean, it's still a great find. That that wasn't a bad price. No, you know, wasn't a bad item to get. All right, we're on number five now. Number five takes us back to the movie Alien, and it is the Narcissus. Still one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite designs for like an escape pod or like a lifeboat for spacecraft. I love the design of the Narcissus. And it says, Designed for emergency escape purposes only, the E-1 shuttlecraft can separate from its mothership and with limited interstellar capabilities can support a crew of four for up to six months active or indefinitely in hypersleep until help can be provided. The E-1 is equipped with the latest homing beacon distress signal automatically triggered on launch. This, system at, this system systematized signal is detectable by any ComScan network transponder located around the explored region of the core system. All operational and diagnostic logs from the mothership are downloaded to the shuttlecraft's flight box data, recorded 
recorder both flight box data recorder both as system backup and to provide emergency investigative support now this is vehicle number five in the in the lot and the other way the other wave after this wave was the uh, Terminator wave and I'm not like I don't I don't mind the Terminator movies but I'm not a big fan of like the <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of the vehicles and stuff like that and that they're cool but it's another you know James Cameron kind of deal and sometimes he sometimes he hits home runs sometimes he hits you know not big you know some of his some of his uh some of his vehicles are just rip offs you are not rip offs but just you know the same thing oh that came off it was stuck in there and it just came off somewhere Let's see if I can find out where it came from oh okay well that's kind of sad that broke a little bit of, a little bit of glue will fix that and it pops in easy it, it's not a it's not a, it's not a total break it's just something this something they glued on that didn't stay glued on but here is the Narcissus. That is a really nice ship. It comes with a stand as well. I'm not going to show off the stand because it's the same exact stand as earlier. I'm going to look for, I'm gonna look for some better stands because these are very loose. I don't like them. But quality, uh, detail-wise, this is really nice. I love the Narcissus. I've always thought it was such a cool ship. I really wish the hatch would open in the back here. That would be, be kind of cool. Paint wise, you can see they kind of put a little bit of like blue paint in there to simulate it flying. But all in all, it's still, I mean, it's even got a little docking port right there so you can see the port. Um, it's got some good detail work here on the bottom. A lot of uh, mechanical stuff that's really cool. But that was the Narcissus, guys, and it's really awesome. Now, the next one we have here is from Predator. This box was probably the worst one out of the, out of the mix. And I think this was probably why he sold it so cheap, is because if, if it was for an inbox collector, that wouldn't sell. But this is, and you can tell it took a, ooh, this took a little water damage, I believe. Well, that's sad. Because it's kind of sticking to everything, like it didn't, I think that might have got a little water, water damage. He might have had it in like his basement or something. And I see there's some tape up top too, so that's probably the way I need to open it rather than trying to open it from the side. Just following the uh, tape, and I didn't realize that I was going the wrong way, but you can tell the box had some... Looks like water damage, or got caught up in something. You know, you can kind of see it right there. But this tells you it's a Type 1 short-range space transport carrier, one pilot, plus up to six landing pods. Comes from Yautja Prime. Often connected to a mothership, the scout ship is used to drop off Yautja hunters in close proximity to a planet. Now, I remember seeing this in, I want to say, AVP, and, Pred and I saw it, and I remember seeing it in the original Predator. But let's get this out of the box here, and let's take a look at it. Yeah, that box took some water damage. That's sad. Comes with that same NECA stand, and I'm going to take that out of the plastic there. Now they taped the, this. This stand was taped. The other ones were loose, so that's kind of a that's kind of a new thing. All right, gotta be real careful here because that last one broke so easily. I don't want to pop anything off if I don't have to. Ow, that hurt. Got my thumb caught between the. Ugh. I hate clamshells. I'm gonna try to see if I can. I don't want to pry it, but. Oh, that would have helped if I saw that. There, it's free. Sitting there trying to pull it out, and then I didn't. I, what I couldn't see was there was a. Same, it was the same color as the vehicle. Now, one of the prongs did get a little bent in the plastic there, but here is the dropship. That is a really nice looking dropship. I love the design of that, but that stand is not going to hold it. It is really heavy, and it's going to just tilt it. Those stands, they're not the best. Not not my favorite. But look at the design of that. It's just so cool looking. I, I love the Predator. I love the Predator vehicles. 
got a little bit of like this neat scale armor kind of going on there it's got kind of a insect look here on the back it's really cool um that's number that was number six in the mix so we're at the final vehicle here and this one also feels like it may have gotten a little damage there i don't know this is the long range long range customized transport ship takes a crew of three minimum can accommodate up to 20 high density layered shielding place planet of origin is unknown so they don't tell you about this one used by the nomadic group of yalta hunters known as the lost tribe as a means to transport and living quarters it's about 37 meters long by 19 meters wide and weighs approximately 239 million kilotons kilograms max speed is light speed so they give you a little more information on on these ships here and again this is one of this is the lost tribe ship i, I don't remember the lost tribe does anybody else remember the lost tribe because i don't were they in one of the predator movies if so kind of but that's this is the art the detailed schematic on the back here and i like that I like that they include like detailed schematics. I'm a I'm a big blueprint and schematics kind of guy. And that stand was loose. And again, that one's just got a starry background, so not not a whole lot going on there in the backgrounds of these. All right. They give you another one of those like NECA stands, and again, I'm not a big fan of those stands. Those stands feel like they're not the greatest. But let's go ahead and cut this out. Careful not to cut the figure. And I want to show that in detail there because that is a, it looks so much better. It looks so just bug like. Almost like, almost like the uh, alien queen in a way. But there, there's what it looks like. It's got a very insect like look to it. And I love the, the mechanical look here on the bottom. But this is the Lost Tribe ship, and it looks really cool. Now, one of the things that kind of weirds me out here is I feel like that right there kind of looks different. I, maybe I'm maybe I'm just overthinking that. But still, it's not a bad looking figure. I, I like the design of it. It's really cool. It's really heavy. They're all very he good weight. It's a very good weight for like a vehicle, but that's how i mean that's that's a nice figure i mean you can see as i'm putting it there it's it's the size of my hand literally the size of my hand and i've got a big hand so you can kind of like rest that in your hand still a nice piece though i mean detail and detail wise i love all these little extra details added to it it's really well done again the paint's not the best and i think that's just for the fact that they didn't really plan to make these as detailed you can tell some of these feel kind of rushed but still it's nice looking nice looking figure i'll definitely give NECA credit where credit's due they actually took their time to make decent figures now my favorite out of this is probably going to be that udl cheyenne or the ud4l cheyenne and i love that simply for the fact that it's it, i've always wanted one of these i've always wanted something like this I really wished that when Kenner made their figures, they made the, the Cheyenne dropship, but they didn't really go to detail, and I love that that folding that it does. It's still a great, great deal of detail on that. Um, that's probably going to be my favorite out of the mix. My second favorite is that APC, of course. I also look, and this right here is probably right there, number three for me. Or that's, no, I, I take that back. This is number two. Uh, it, I really can't rank them. I can't. That APC, that APC is really good, really well detailed, heavy. I love the I love the heft of it, but this is actually kind of right up my alley as well. So I'm, I'm loving I'm loving all of these. These are really great uh, items. Again, the only complaint I do have is these stands. They're terrible. They're you know you can't really put any weight on them, and if you do, it just kind of like it, it it's stiff, but it's not like perfectly stiff if that makes sense. NECA really could have done a little better with their stands on on these ships because they're not that's not gonna hold these ships that's just gonna tilt them but anyway got comrades that's it for today's video thank y'all so much for watching make sure you like comment subscribe y'all can follow me on Facebook Twitter Instagram discord and TikTok 
leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of today's uh, unboxing or what you'd like to see me unbox next. You can click on that bell icon because that's going to keep you up to date with what we're doing, when we're doing it, and all that jazz. Check the links in the description for all of my wonderful friends as well as, my, as, well as their works, as well as links to our merch shop where you can snag some awesome merch for not a bad price. It's always awesome to get some merch. Go out there and snag some merch. It supports the channel. It helps us grow. But anyway, comrades, thank y'all so much for watching. Much love. And Dasvidaniya.